the story of St. Kenya may be the reason why our town is called Kainshim. Maybe? Maybe not? There's been loads of drama in the news about this here, right? So apparently loads of people have stacked it on this cycle lane. It seems like a bog standard high street to me, apart from this man, the monk, walking across the, uh, the road. That's random. Are you Keynesian girls? We yeah. are Keynesian girls. We're the office girls. Swan neck gourds. Look at this. Yeah. Here we go. It might go a bit high. Holy cow. Look Whoa, that. that's in yes, the tree. Mate. It's got like this machete. <laughs> you got a machete doing it. Really we're, walking. The right we're walking and we're picking the ones that we like. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of A Day in the UK. And today we're going to be exploring Keynesian home allegedly to St. Cain and was also in the Doomsday Book as well. I believe it sits in between Bath and Bristol. Now, um, I've got an issue with my battery and my inverter. I don't think, you know, inverter basically uh, converts 12 volt to 240 volt because I work a lot in my van and I use the laptop and phone from the inverter. However, the charger's not working. So I'm taking it to a chap called Josh. He sounds awesome, sounds like he knows what he's doing. I'm gonna leave the van with him and then we're going to get to Keynesham and shoot a little video. Uh, yeah, and see what we can find. It's going to be a good one. I'll catch you all soon. Right, so, looks like Josh is on a farm here. Let's go pull up over here. Hello, mate. Perfect. How do, mate? How are you, mate? Good to meet you. Adam, nice to meet you, fella. Josh. Right, so basically, um, yeah, we had a little chat on the phone, didn't we, mate? So there's an issue with the battery. The battery isn't working. Um, the fuse is blown. Yeah. The fuse is basically melted. I changed the fuse. I changed a few fuses. I changed a 30 amp fuse and a 50 amp fuse. Yeah. And yeah, the, it's because the battery's not working, the inverter isn't working. And yeah. I work off that for my laptop. So if I haven't got that, I can't work on the road, basically, mate. So, yeah, I get you. I get yeah. you. So leave it with me for the day. Yeah, um, cool. I'll have a little look over. I'll see what I can find, and hopefully I get it fixed, so you can uh, get back to using it as your job properly when you uh, pick it up. I'll leave it in your hands, bud. No problem. All right, nice one. Cheers, Cheers fella. Thank you. Right, cab has dropped me off. I'm on Canesham High Street. Let's have a little wander down, shall we? Let's have a little wander down. I love that. You know what? When you uh, when you're making the most of something, he's working on the van. Josh is doing the van. I'm coming to explore. Kainsham. Let's see what we've got here. Welcome to Temple Street. Temple Street. How you doing ladies? You alright? Yeah, okay. Thanks. Right. What's this? Let me read it to you. Kainsham has been an important place for textile production since the medieval abbey was built here. In the 1400s, Albert Mill and Avon Mill were fulling mills. I don't know what that is. But producing thickly woven woolen cloth. Interesting, Let's see what else we can find. The Trout Tavern. It's quite cool. There's some more information. Here we go, let's read this. St. Kenya is said, it's a bit dubious, isn't it? It's said. Said to be a holy woman who lived on the banks of the serpent infested River Avon. All right, well, straight away, I'm like, mm, I'm not buying this. The legend, the legend, is that the power of her prayers turned the serpents to stone. The story was probably inspired by the ammonite fossils that are abundant, probably inspired. <laughs> was it though, really? Probably inspired by, it's a bit of a tenuous link that, by the ammonite fossils that are abundant in this area. Interesting, okay. The story of St. Kenya may be the reason why our town is called Kainshim. Maybe, maybe not. So it's based on fiction. So even if it was from St. Kenya, uh, Kainsham came from St. Kenya. It's based on fiction, it's based on myth, isn't it? Anyway. Oh, do people just want a meaning for where they live, don't they? They just want some pride in where they live. Do you know what I mean? Turkish style barbers. Let's go across there and see them. See them cutting some hair, shall we? Let's have a little look. How you going, fellas? Yeah. You doing good? Good, good, yeah. Yeah? Do you do shaves, Turkish shaves as well? Do the shave, the wet shave? shave yeah. Yeah? Not that I need this, obviously, but I tell you what, you've got to have a Turkish shave, they're amazing. Aren't they, fellas? Yeah. All the best, anyway. Yeah, Take care, yeah? yeah. 
All right. Okay. As we're moving further up, the Keensham Civic Centre. We've got here Blades Barbers. Let's have a little look here. Under four, ten pounds. Wise men cuts, only ten pounds. What's a wise men cut? Let's find out. What's a wise men cut, bud? Uh, OAPs. OAP? Yeah. OAP I, love, I love the way you call it a wise men cut. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? Instead of OAPs, mate, everyone should adopt that. It's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Love it. Fantastic. I'm going to be a wise man one day. I'm not going to be an OAP. Definitely not. Let's see if we can find some people to chat. You local, bud? No. No? You are. <laughs> hey, I ain't silly. You're scared of cameras. <laughs> right, see this here, right? There's been loads of drama in the news about this here, right? So apparently loads of people have stacked it on this cycle lane. So let me read something, right? So that you can hear what's been going on because this, this is going to be been a bit of a storm, this has. It says here, right, it says here, Optical illusion cycle lane, dubbed most, Britain's most dangerous, will remain open, despite at least 80 people injured by falling since last March, right? So, allegedly, I wonder if it's over this part over here, right? It looks like a step, but it's not a step, is it? It's, it's just flat. So is that what they mean by the optical illusion? I've got to be honest, I don't see the issue, if I'm honest. Anyone falling on this? Has anyone fallen? Let me know in the comments. Here's some more local news for you. This cracked me up. Footpath across field in Canesham closed as cow keeps charging at people. Well, I've tried to engage with some locals. No one's interested in chatting. No one's got much to say. No one knows anything about the town so far. Maybe I'm not engaging with the, uh, the local characters. I don't know. Um, do you live local? No? No. Seems like no one's local, they're coming in. Because it's a tourist place sort of thing. Is it? A little bit, yeah, isn't it? This is a tourist place? A little bit, yeah. Huh. There's nothing here. There's nothing here. Why never you tell them that? Right, so I just spoke to... Um... Right, hang on a minute. <laughs> I see what they mean now. Yeah, that is bad. That is bad. I stepped off, but it felt like I was supposed to be stepping off a higher curb. So I can see why people trip over. I get it. I get it. Right, let's cross the road. Okay, so I just spoke to a couple of ladies. Didn't want to be on camera. They said it was a... They said it was a tourist place. I've got to be honest. I don't understand that. It seems like a bog standard high street to me, apart from this man, the monk, walking across the, uh, the road. That's random. Hello, is there a monastery? Hello. Is there a monastery nearby? Yes, uh, they have a temple in the Bakery house. Oh, really? Yes, a Buddhist temple. A Buddhist, Buddhist temple? Yeah, Buddhist temple, yes. Really? <laughs> yes. And you live there full time, working as a, a Buddhist monk? Yes, Buddhist monk. We have uh, three Buddhist monks who live in there. Do you, um, what do you do there? What do you do in the, t in the temple? Yeah, I'm teaching meditation. And you teach meditation? Teaching, yeah, teaching meditation. And we, we support the, the Thai, the people, the Thai community. When they have oh. a Thai tradition event, with ceremony, we have, the, we make the event in the hall, they show the Thai tradition, they have many Thai foods. Oh really? Yes. <laughs> and and obviously you're funding that, so basically you're you're making money for the, the people in Thailand. Yes. So it's a charity for people in Thailand. Yeah, the, the charity people in Thailand. Yeah. Uh, but we have the thirty by, by the English people. We oh. have the thirty. Yeah. Oh, I see. And what made you become a monk? Uh, uh, the first time. When the younger, the start younger, I be the novice first. About the eight year and twenty years old, I be the monk. Yeah. Now I be the 
uh, monk and novice in about 22 years now. You've been a monk 22 years and how yes. old are you now? Yes, a very really long time. And how old are you? Pardon? How old are you? Uh, 35 years old. Wow. Ah, so you were 13 when you started? Yes, yes, that's 13. You don't know pretty much at this point any other life than being a monk? <laughs> yes. And do you, do you enjoy your oh, role really, as a monk? it's really nice. Yeah? It is nice, really hard, really enjoy. <laughs> really? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, listen, I'll let you go. Incredible speak to, to speak to you. Okay, nice to see you. Nice Thank you. you. That made it a bit more interesting. Ah, we've got the church. This is lovely. Very nice. We've got the memorial park. Let's take a little look. Hello. We've got a young couple over there. No one's up for a chat, so let's see if they are. Right, they didn't want to be on camera, but I got a lot of, a lot of information from uh, a couple sitting on a bench. And I said to them, this seems to be quite a poor area, you know, with the charity shops. Um, there's not that I don't like Turkish bar but barbers, as you saw, I love Turkish barbers, but the influx of Turkish barbers, uh, pound shops. But then you've got this vibe about it as well. So I was a bit confused. I'm like, this, this seems like a poor area. And they said, no, 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 this is, this is, you've got like the, uh, the gentrification coming in basically. And they said this place called Summerdale, which is the old Cadbury's factory, is quite an exclusive place to live. And they were talking about the house prizes being 500,000 plus for like a three, four bedroom or something like that. So it shocked me, if I'm honest, because to me, it's just like a bog standard town that hasn't had much love really. All right, so they've got tennis courts here. They've got a huge bowling green, which looks really, really well kept. Seems like a bit of a paradox, this place. This looks like a really nice park. I mean, these tennis courts are really, really well kept. They're gorgeous, actually. Little skate park over here as well. The information you get from locals. Okay, so apparently this is a commuter belt in between Bristol and Bath. So, um, that's basically from what they were saying that's its purpose conflicting viewpoints on one hand someone telling me that uh, it's a tourist place it is not a tourist place i'm sorry i'm going to disagree with you there anyone think it's a tourist place that is absolute bollocks it is not a tourist place okay um it's okay i mean it's, it's, it's nothing really to it but it's definitely not a tourist place definitely more of a commuter town yeah all right we've walked up from here to the old chocolate factory. So all of this used to be Cadbury's, right? So this used to be Cadbury's. And you can see, if I get closer, back in October, A1924, it says on there. And so it stretches right across here, the chocolate quarter. And apparently I bumped into a guy, he said uh, he used to work at the factory when he was 16. And um, they used to give him uh, free chocolate. And he said, but, after a short period of time, they just got sick of it, basically. You could have as much as you wanted, but it says here, this was a 60 million redevelopment. It once had 5,000 5, strong workforce. So 5,000. And here now you've got River House apartments. I think there are retirement apartments. Um, I think it's called the Summerdale Estate. And you've got different, you've got spa and gym, barbershop, hair salon. How are you doing, you all right? Cinema. Si have you? Cinema, where's that then? That's inside the building. No free chocolate anymore though? No, no free chocolate. <laughs> inside the building. Alright, cool. Right, so over the years it produced fries, chocolates, um, double decker, dairy milk, chocolate buttons, uh, cream eggs, mini eggs, Cadbury's fudge, chomp and crunchy. What's your favourite? What's your favourite? Do you like a dairy milk? Keep it simple. Yes, yeah, so I'm just checking online. It says here, 136 retirement apartments and 93 bedroom care home. So there you go, it's got a good use. Hi. How are you doing girls, you all right? Yeah, we're all right. Yeah. That looks 
you look like a star out of the 1930s with those glasses. Thank you. She does. She does. Do you know what I mean? Are you Canesham girls? We yeah. are Canesham girls. We're the office girls. Do you work in the chocolate factory, the old chocolate factory? We do. We work on the first floor. We work for Mighty. What's it like? Yeah, no, it's really nice. The building's re I mean, up in our kitchen, we have loads of old posters of the Cadbury girls. Really? So, yeah, there's loads of pictures of like all the girls making chocolate. We have like some old, like, what are they called? Machinery pieces around the office as well. Yeah. Of like how they used to make the chocolate. That's pretty cool. You wouldn't have been born, would you? By the no, time this was. No. I, I was only born 20 years ago. Would have been quality though, eh? Would have been quality. <laughs> Honestly, if they were still selling chocolate here, I'd never leave. I'd be I know. the size of a fucking house. <laughs> so <laughs> tell, tell me about Canesham. Let's get you both in. Tell me about Canesham. Um, it's pretty boring. What's going on? Why are you sitting so apart, you two? Um, it's just pretty boring. <laughs> like social distancing or something. <laughs> Literally. Um, boring, full of old people, lots of new builds, lots of shops, yeah. lots of cafes. It's kind of what I it. found, really. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, all, that's all that's here. But it's a really nice community. Like, yeah. Everyone's pretty friendly. Yeah. Just what do you do then to me? get some sort of excitement here? <laughs> excitement? Just loads of drama. Do you set off fireworks? <laughs> do, do, do what? Loads of drama in the office. <laughs> office drama? Yeah. How's about that then? Brilliant girls. This is what you want. You want characters when you come to a place. So um, I'm glad I met them. Josh has just sent me a message. So I'm going to go and pick up the van and then it's on to the pumpkin patch. Well, right, let's see if the van is sorted. Well, let's pop the hood up there. Okay. Hello, buds. How are you doing? How's it going? Yeah, all good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good. All sorted. Yeah. Uh, is it is it sorted? Yeah, Fixed? it's all done. All done. Yeah. So yeah. So long story short, basically, I just took out all of the old wire in. Yeah. Which is here. A little bit questionable, um, but yeah, a not so good drip fuse, which was used for the isolator switch. Yeah, yeah. Now we've got a proper one in there. This was uh, one of the not so good fuse, trippable fuses for yeah, the DC charger. I know, yeah, that's that's what I had to replace, but it kept burning out. Yeah, and that was yep. that was your fuse holders at the start know, of the front. You yeah. can see how how hot they've got and they've kind of melted. But yeah, this size cable is uh, it, the cable wasn't really thick enough. wasn't thick enough, was it? No, and then there was other weird little joins and yeah, not so good. Work. Right, but anyway, so I'm going to show you now. Go on, mate. I'm excited, mate. I'm excited. <laughs> So we've got some nice 16 mil cable now, which is the proper size that it should be used. Yeah. Straight to the battery terminal through a MIDI fuse holder here. So yep, you know cool. that if it shorts anywhere, it's fully protected. Right. And then we've ran the cable, or I've ran the cable in conduit, all the way along here. Nice, nice, all nice. There, into the behind the scuttle panel. Lovely. And into the bulkhead. Right, okay, cool. And then your DC charger. He's not mucking around. No, it's exactly where it was before, but just rewired is underneath there. And so there's, there's, okay, that's rewired. Okay, cool. And there's also another fuse holder uh, that fuses the DC charger, this side of the leisure battery. Brilliant, okay. To ensure, like say, if any if any cable's short out, then the cable's fully protected. And it'll just awesome, mate. But also, uh, Go going back to that wiring on the floor. Yeah. So there was, I'll show you it again. This was used um, to basically turn the inverter off, which is the main power. Yeah, cable. that's right. Kind of doesn't yeah. really make sense. Yep, yep. So what I've done now instead. Yep. Everyone's getting an education in inverters, mate. Yeah. Oh, that's it's brilliant. Got a nice little toady switch. So you just oh, sweet. Turn it on. Light lights up blue. It's a Victron switch, right? Power okay. So yeah, nice and neat. Right, guys, and that that's the inverter. Basically, I plug into that. Let me see the plug into my laptop and phone as well, which uh, allows me to be off grid. Mate, that is wicked. A much thicker wiring as well. Yes, yes, right. much So thicker. that stops it from shorting, does it? Well, it just allows the allows the amount of amps that come through that cable are now suited to the cable size, if that makes sense. So before it was like two and a half mil cable. So right. for the DC charger, it should have been 16 mil, so it can carry the amount of current that it needs to, and that's what's been used. Legend, mate. Right, right. let's get the payment sorted. Yeah. Um, Most mate, important part. I'm well happy with that. That is absolutely brilliant. No worries. Um, yeah, thanks very much, man. Thanks no very worries, much. Man. Cheers. Awesome. Thank awesome. You. What an absolute legend. I'm going to leave Josh's website and details in the description, a little link up here, up here as well, so you can check out his website. If you need anything done with your van, what an outstanding job. I tell you, it's just a simple thing like that, you know, it means everything because. For me, I need to be able to work in the van. So yeah, brilliant job, what a top lad. Let's get across to Avon Valley Adventure and Wildlife Park for the pumpkin patch. Let's do it, come on. 
All right, everyone, welcome to Avon Valley Adventure and Wildlife Park. Speaking of parking, I've just parked up the van, put some batteries on charge, had a nice cup of coffee. And we're going to get across now to the wheelbarrow station, right? Because what they've got at the moment in October is the, I'd call it like a pumpkin festival, but it's a pumpkin patch, but there's loads of stuff going on. Let's get to the wheelbarrow station, grab a wheelbarrow, and see if we can pick up a nice plump pumpkin, see what's going on in there, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do first is we're going to have a little walk around and see what we've got here at the pumpkin patch. Loads of things going on. And then we're going to pick up this and go and grab a pumpkin. believe the amount of different pumpkins there are we've got munchkins here mother hubbards look at this one that is crazy stunning colors look at this swan neck gourds look at this look at this everyone does anyone actually cook pumpkins are they all going to be displays for halloween let's check it out let's find out shall we but are you going to eat them or are they going to be like a display a display they're going to be a display are they? Yeah. What, what about that big fat one there uh, even that display. one yeah. A display as yeah, well. Jesus, I'd be, I'd be chomping on that. Are you eating these pumpkins? Or are you gonna put them in your window? If you put some recipes up, I might follow some. Yeah, that's a, you know what? That'd be a good idea. A idea put some it? recipes up. Yeah. Are you eating them? Or are you gonna put them in your window? Are they just for display? These are just for display. No cooking, no. No cooking. No. Here's a question for you: How many pumpkins do you reckon are gonna get eaten? How many do you think is gonna be put in a display of a window and carved? What would you in the percentages? Stick it in the comments. Well, on, check this out. You've got four different games. Pumpkin slingshot, pumpkin paintball, apple cannon, and bottle smash. Let's give them all a go, shall we? Let's do it. Right, let's go for the target right over there. I wonder if you can see it, see. No. You have 50 shots. 50 shots, yeah? Yeah. Those cool, cool. Your gun, you should be safe. This is the gun. Shot, yeah. <laughs> what we got here then, bud? So, it's a simple apple cannon. Yeah. I'll load the apple in, yep. pull this back, put it back in. You pull it up, yep. press these two down, and you can name it anything in front of you. Here we go. It might go a bit high. Holy cow! Look Whoa, that. that's in yes, the tree. Right. This is oh, the that, I'll just load it again for you. The kids are going to love this. Go on then. Right, one more time. I'm going to go for the door. Okay, let's see, let's see if I can get that. Curls a bit. No. Oh, no, no. Alright, thanks, mate. Just take... Ace. Absolutely oh, no. brilliant, that was. Yeah. Right, okay, so what's, what's this, bud? Bottle, bottle smash. smash. Yeah, bottle smash. Okay, thank you. Really need to pelt it to smash. No. No. Unlucky, mate. What? I just tried to get Has anyone smashed them yet, or is this uh, one of those? Only one today. Oh, I feel better about that now. Only one person smashed a bottle. So look at this, they've got a marshmallow toasting station. You buy over there and you go and toast it on a... You come and toast it on your mate, yeah. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? How much are the uh, marshmallows, lovely? £3. There we go. See what, these are absolutely massive. <laughs> this didn't go well. This didn't go well, I thought it was going to go. <laughs> So you've got two massive pumpkin patch fields. This is one of them. Look at this, absolutely enormous. The backdrop of the fair in the back there. Right everyone, we're gonna go and get the pumpkin now. So I've just stationed my wheelbarrow just over here. So look, 
You've got different prices, two, 250, 350, 450, 650, 850, 10 pound and 12 pound, depending on the size. They've got loads of carvings here. Check this out. Can you carve? Are you any good at carving? We've got loads, loads of different types that. Okay, see this here. At night, glows up. This is the pumpkin lantern tunnel. All of these have got lights in them. It glows up at night. Great stuff. Do you get if you get a feel for it? What is it? What's how are you picking your pumpkins? Got this machete. And <laughs> you got a machete doing it. Really honoured to the process. We're walking. Very, very important job to find the right pumpkin, right? This one over here, see that? I've got a feeling, I've got a nice feeling about it. You've got to use your gut instinct when it comes to picking up the right pumpkin. This is it. Right, everyone, I'm off to pay for my pumpkin. Get yourself down here with the family. It's open till the 31st of October. Also check out Fearless and Fear Scare Park, the Halloween events here, they're incredible. I shall catch you all soon. Bring your family down, it's brilliant. All the best, cheers.